Welcome back to Montana this morning, everyone. The time is 646. Beautiful, big blue skies to get our Thursday started. 54 degrees here in Billings. Everything's looking pretty green, especially after all of that rain we got. But will we get more is on the minds of many. Ed will tell us in just a few minutes when we get to his forecast. But for now, let's get to news. Our top story, a large power outage leaves Billings in the dark. An outage map by Northwestern Energy shows more than 4,000 customers were without power overnight. This is what the Midtown area looked like around 2.30 this morning from our iCam time lapse. Complete darkness. The lights started coming back on around 3.30. We're waiting to hear back on what caused the outage. The city of Laurel has declared a state of emergency due to flooding. Heavy rains coupled with the melting snowpack has resulted in a significant rise in the water levels on the Yellowstone River. Brad Shoemaker, Yellowstone County Disaster and Emergency Services Director, says local creeks and streams will be running bank full and then some heading into the long weekend. So the short term outlook is for more rain over the course of the next 24, 36 hours, and then we're actually looking at a relatively big warm up for the rest of the week that could lead to more snow melt at higher elevations. The combination of those two is what kind of gives us concern for levels of the river and flooding because the two of them together could lead to quite a rise in the river. The impacts of that, we would expect some, some low lying fields to be inundated with water and then with the widespread rain, there's not a lot of places for that to drain to. So we would expect that water would stand and possibly back up in some of those low lying areas. Shoemaker says if you witness any flooding, contact local authorities. And as always, if you encounter flooded roadways of an uncertain depth, do not attempt to drive across them. A rumor at the Lockwood schools led to a soft lockdown as a security precaution on Wednesday. The Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office determined that there is no safety threat, but deputies plan to have an increased presence this week. A soft lockdown means the school was locked, but students and teachers were able to move inside the building. This came after a series of rumors about a possible threat to Eileen Johnson Middle School. Superintendent Tobin Navazio told parents attendance is optional today and Friday. He will also meet with the sheriff's office today to decide if the eighth grade promotion ceremony will still take place. Turning to court news, a former chemist at the Billings Water Treatment Plant faces charges for allegedly contaminating water samples. When the woman was confronted about spiking her co-workers' water samples, she couldn't explain her actions. Michelle Henderson made her initial appearance Wednesday in Yellowstone County Justice Court on one count of tampering with public records. Henderson was one of three chemists employed by the city of Billings Water Treatment Plant in 2015. One chemist began experiencing failed water sample tests on a routine basis, which was abnormal. When Henderson took a week vacation, the samples did not fail. Supervisors installed security cameras in the lab, which showed Henderson spiking the chemist's samples. When she was finally confronted about the contamination, Henderson just said, oh. Her alleged actions cost the city thousands of dollars to investigate and also cost the city its state certification that year. Henderson is being held at the Yellowstone County Jail on $25,000 bond. A Crow Agency man with at least four prior convictions for driving while intoxicated now faces a new DUI charge after he was found asleep at the wheel in Laurel. 37-year-old Larney Stewart was charged Wednesday in Yellowstone County Justice Court. Laurel police were called Tuesday night about an apparent drunk driver asleep at the wheel on Yard Office Road. An officer found Stewart passed out with his foot on the brake as the vehicle was running and in gear. The officer woke woke Stewart up, but he was allegedly so intoxicated he could barely stay conscious. Stewart was transported to the hospital for treatment. A blood draw revealed Stewart had a blood alcohol content nearly three times the legal driving limit. He's being held at the Yellowstone County Jail. For the first time in 44 years, the state of Wyoming will allow grizzly bear hunting. In, in a unanimous vote Wednesday, the Wyoming Game and Fish Commission approved the hunting of 22 grizzlies this fall in areas east and south of Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks. 
The vote comes after Yellowstone grizzlies were removed from the endangered species list just last year. Environmental groups criticized the move, saying the commission ignored the more than 185,000 comments opposing the hunt. But the commission says its plan is a conservative approach to regulating the new hunting season. As part of the plan, no hunting will be allowed inside Yellowstone or nearby Grand Teton National Park or the road that connects the two parks. Now we go to Great Falls where people gathered from across the state to voice their opposition against the Keystone XL pipeline. What do we want? Clean water. What do we want now? What do we want? Those against it say the project will threaten the drinking and irrigation water in the state along with water used by farmers, ranchers and tribal members from the Fort Peck Reservation. The rally comes before today's federal court hearing regarding the Trump administration's approval of the pipeline. Dina Hoff of Glendive tells us she's experienced negative, negative effects of a pipeline before, seeing a pipeline spilled in 2015 under her sheep pasture. A 36 inch pipeline <laughs> would have uh, nine times the capacity of the 12 inch pipeline that broke under the river in Glendive below my sheep pasture. And people don't have all the facts. They don't understand the implications of this pipeline. It's more than jobs. It is devastation. Today's hearing begins at 10 a.m. in the Missouri River Federal Courthouse in Great Falls. In other news, you can now find Montana in Virginia. The submarine named after the Treasure State is now about half complete in Virginia and is on schedule to be launched in 2020. On Wednesday, the USS Montana Committee presented an update of the sub that will soon be amongst the most advanced in the world. It's a nuclear fast attack submarine complete with stealth capabilities designed to help out with surveillance and intelligence gathering operations. The shipyard held a Kiel Lang ceremony ceremony last week. The submarine will also bear a flag designed to show Montana spirit. Patriots around Montana have joined the USS Montana committee and are committed to uh, making sure the crew knows that when they go in harm's way, when they're on scene, unseen in defense of our country, Montanans are with them. And hats and shirts are also being made to honor the new submarine. One last story for you on this Thursday. A Laurel couple is alive after what they call a miracle. On Wednesday, they met, they met the emergency crews who helped them make it out of a terrible wreck safely. It happened in March when their PT cruiser got pinned under a tractor trailer on Interstate 90. Charity Stevens, an off-duty EMT, was the first on scene that day. Though notoriously early, she happened to be running late to work that day when she drove past the wreck. An onlooker then helped Stevens into the car where she says she was prepared for the worst. I was preparing myself for the worst and I, I always give my cross a little rub before I go into a bad call and so I kind of rubbed it and then I just dove underneath and I was just shocked. They were both, their heads were perfectly lined up in the rafters under the, 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 the trailer and it has like these bars and they were perfect right in the spaces. I've never seen anything like it. I don't believe nurses have jobs. I believe they have callings because it has to come to me in here and that can't be taught. I mean, I don't care what, what, what nursing school they go to or anything. That stuff's not taught. I can't say enough about the way the hospital took care of us and the EMTs and everything else. Uh, I mean, we're here today you know, witness to what gear we got. And, and, and in fact, it was a miracle. In her 14 years of work as an EMT, Stephen says that was the smoothest extrication she's ever been part of.